From Eyewitness News, this is Newsmakers. And then there were two. I'm here today to announce my candidacy for election to the United States Senate. Former state Supreme Court Justice Robert Flanders becoming the second Republican to announce a 2018 bid for Senate, joining state rep Bobby Nardalillo in the GOP primary. Both men seeking the chance to take on two-term Democrat Sheldon Whitehouse. How does Flanders plan to overcome years of Democratic dominance? And where does he stand on the big issues like tax reform and health care? This week on Newsmakers, Republican U.S. Senate candidate Robert Flanders. Welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. Joining me on the program from WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Bob, welcome back to the show. It's good to have you and congratulations on your entrance into the race. Thank you. Delighted to be here and back with both of you. I'm going to give you a one minute of free airtime here. Uh, why do you want to be U.S. Senator? I think I make a big difference in terms of the way things uh, are done down there. I come as a problem solver. I, I'm real supporting of uh, bipartisan solutions. I think we have too much uh, uh, partisanship going on down there, one side beating up on the other, and if someone proposes a plan, the other side is automatically against it. We need more cooperation across the aisle and come up with compromise solutions that can benefit uh, working class Rhode Islanders and Americans uh, and small businesses. All right, so you're uh, a litigator. We want to litigate how <laughs> you're going to uh, get that done. Ted and I have a lot of policy and, and uh, political questions for you. But I want to get to something uh, something out of the way and something that's been in the headlines a lot this uh, past week. Senate candidate Roy Moore accused by multiple women that he pursued them when they were teens. And another woman says Moore sexually assaulted her. I believe you said he should step out of the race. Is that your uh, stand yes, on that? Yes, I think that the number and credibility of the allegations overall are such that I think uh, he ought to step aside and uh, uh, given uh, I don't think those uh, <laughs> Those allegations are such that ought to be trailing a candidate for the U.S. Senate. Demo uh, Democratic Senator Al Franken is accused of groping and forcibly kissing a woman in 2006. Where do you fall on that? Uh, well, obviously, he's admitted that uh, he was uh, way out of line doing that. He's uh, welcomed an ethics investigation. Uh, you know, I, I, th every situation is different. Uh, in the case of Moore, there's just been so many and so credible allegations. Uh, but. Let's see where this goes with uh, Senator Franken. Is this the only situation, or is this a pattern? And if so, then obviously that has more serious Should there be an ethics investigation? Oh, absolutely. He himself has called for it. So uh, certainly, and if others are in the same boat as the original complainant, then obviously that should come forward as well. President Trump has more than a dozen on-the-record allegations of sexual misconduct against him and was famously caught on tape bragging about committing sexual assault. What about him? Should there be a Senate ethics investigation on the president? Well, he's already, uh, you know, on record as as doing what he did. Uh, the voters, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, have uh, elected him, notwithstanding all all of that. Uh, I don't know that another ethics investigation is going to turn out anything new. If uh, there are more allegations or more incidents that haven't yet come out, that's another thing. But so far, that hasn't happened. But this is an ongoing situation. It's obviously deplorable. And, it, and no person, president, senator, uh, or just an average Joe, ought to be immune from the consequences of this kind of inappropriate behavior. During your uh, kickoff yesterday, uh, one of your big arguments and one that your supporters made too is that Senator Whitehouse is too wealthy and too privileged to, to really understand regular people's problems. Uh, you certainly do come from more modest roots than Senator Whitehouse, but you're, you're pretty elite now. You live in East Greenwich. Uh, you were charging six fifty an hour as a lawyer a few years ago. You chair the exclusive Dunes Club in Narragansett. Aren't you part of the same elite now as Sheldon Whitehouse? I don't think so because I've never forgotten where I've come from and what I've been able to achieve in terms of uh, standing, income, has all been earned in terms of the work I've done. Uh, but I've never left my roots. I've never left uh, where, where I came from originally. And I'm an exemplar of uh, the American story, the, the American dream, somebody who comes from modest, humble beginnings, able to achieve through hard work, through good education. Uh, that's something that I think uh, all, all of us hope we can uh, pass on to our children. And I want to make this campaign about a better Rhode Island uh, future for folks here. I'm a Rhode Islander by choice. 
I, I, Brown has been very good to me, and I want to pay back, and that's one of the reasons why I'm running for uh, the U.S. Senate. Bobby Nardalillo, your opponent, who Tim mentioned in the open uh, in a statement yesterday about you coming into the race, said, quote, Sheldon Whitehouse is a man whose energy and attention are suspect. He's an Ivy League lawyer who has always lived off trust funds and paychecks from the public. Republicans cannot beat this candidate by running a clone against him. Uh, Nardalillo says you're a clone of Sheldon Whitehouse. Well, obviously that's not so. Uh, my whole approach would be different than his. I'm not a hyper-partisan. My approach is going to be to work across the aisle and try and come up with compromise solutions. Uh, unfortunately, Senator Whitehouse has been more of an attack dog for the Democrats, a very hyper-partisan, can't waste any opportunity to criticize the president or, or, the, or the Republicans for what they're doing. I think that's counterproductive. And obviously the difference in our backgrounds. He's, he was born on third base. Uh, and I've had to drag, bunt, steal, and try and find my way to, to uh, home plate in a whole different way. So uh, there are plenty of contrasts uh, between us, and uh, uh, I think that'll be brought out during this campaign. The question is how many baseball analogies will there be on this show from a man <laughs> who was drafted in the major leagues? Yeah. You voted for President Trump but said you are an independent-minded Republican and suggested you won't vote in lockstep with the president and Republican leaders. But what policies um, or decisions can you specifically point to right now that uh, President Trump has uh, has made that you disagree with? Well, I disagree with uh, this. I, I agree with his goals: uh, less regulation, tax reform, uh, border security, uh, tax relief. All of that is uh, um, right in his corner. It's the methods. I, I don't like the tweet storm uh, method of governing that uh, he's unfortunately adopted. I don't like the baiting of this North Korean dictator uh, in the various ways that he's done that. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't like uh, some of that, uh, but as I said, I, I support the goals and I'm hopeful that uh, we'll be able to accomplish tax reform, a better health care plan. Support the wall? Uh, I support border security. A wall may be part of that, but I don't think it's a complete answer. I think, you know, the whole... Well, you might have to vote on legislation that funds it or not. Well, it depends on how much of it and whether it's part of a comprehensive plan. Look, uh, folks are tunneling under uh, existing walls and existing fences, so we know that can't be the complete answer. We've got to have better uh, technology to detect that sort of uh, illegal border crossing, and just building a wall won't, won't do it. But what, might that be part of a more comprehensive plan to secure our borders? Perhaps. Let's see what it is. Let's uh, see how much it's going to cost and, uh, you know, uh, evaluate it in that context. Let's stay on immigration. Um, you've, you mentioned to uh, Kathy Gregg at the Providence Journal that uh, you're, you're open to an accommodation for children who were brought to the United States illegally. That's the Deferred Action Program is a big part of that. Putting aside children, uh, whether they're their parents or they don't have children, what do you think we should do about it, adults who are in the United States illegally? Should they be deported? Uh, should there be an amnesty? Uh, should they be allowed to get citizenship? Where are you on uh, putting aside the children, which is sort of a different case, the yeah. adults? Yeah, I think uh, I'm not in favor of amnesty. I don't, uh, I'm don't. i a former judge. I respect the difference between legal and illegal immigration. I'm all in favor of immigration that's legal, and uh, this is a country of immigrants. But uh, you know, we have to draw a line as to what people who come here legally versus illegally. So um, I would prioritize enforcement against uh, uh, undocumented aliens who are here and violating our laws. Uh, they should be deported without question after due process, of course. Uh, but uh, I'm open to working with uh, others who are here illegally, short of uh, complete amnesty. Uh, as long as they're law-abiding and, and uh, uh, abiding with uh, and, and paying taxes and holding jobs and so forth. But uh, we've got to draw the line between illegal and legal immigration, and there have to be consequences for folks who uh, want to jump ahead of those who are trying to get here and have gotten here legally. We've, uh, when I ask you a different policy topic, we've, we've been talking a lot about tax reform, and uh, there was some talk this week from, from Speaker Ryan and others that the next big debate will be entitlement reform, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Um, would you support or would you consider supporting raising the retirement age for Social Security or Medicare? Uh, I'd have to see whether it's part of a, a more comprehensive plan. I, I think uh, right now I, I, I'm in favor of preserving uh, Medicare and Medicaid uh, the way it is. I don't think we should um, tinker with that um, dramatically. 
but I'd have to see what the specifics are. Uh, you know, th some things are, are working relatively well. Medicare is one of them. Uh, I'm uh, totally opposed, however, to the plan that Senator Whitehouse and Senator Sanders put forth to put everybody uh, on Medicare and socialized medicine. This is the uh, Medicare for all single Medicare payer plan. Medicare for all single payer government uh, uh, control of health care plan. I think that would be a disaster. Uh, the, the cost of it alone would be prohibitive. Trillions of dollars in tax increases would be needed, and even then, it couldn't pay for it. So that's not the answer. The answer is more competition in our health care plan, allowing folks to buy insurance across state lines, more transparency about price, about outcomes with hospitals and health care providers, and uh, letting, letting folks choose insurance plans just the way we choose auto and uh, uh, house insurance. Uh, we need more competition. We need to free up the government uh, to be able to um, com uh, uh, negotiate down pharma prices, drug You drug support costs. that? I do, absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, the pharmaceutical industry has uh, been able to get away with uh, a non-competitive pricing situation because some of the biggest purchases are the government. And uh, for reasons that are beyond me, the government is, is not allowed to bring its full leverage to bear on negotiating lower prices. Uh, that would be enormously helpful because uh, pharma, the, the pharmacy aspect of this, the drug prices are a big factor in driving up in premiums. One other quick question on health care while we're on it. Uh, would, uh, you've said you wouldn't have voted for the Affordable Care Act, the Obamacare. Would you vote to repeal it now? Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, for sure I would. Uh, yeah, no, I certainly would. I think it's been a disaster. Uh, the pricing has gone out of control. It was based on a f the false premise that you could keep your plan, according to uh, President Obama at the time, and, uh, and, and your doctor, and that turned out not to be so. It just hasn't worked. And so we need, it's crying out for a, a compromise plan. Uh, that can enjoy bipartisan support. So yes, I'm in favor of repealing it. In, in Ted's uh, original question, the re retirement age on Social Security, uh, you know, there was a lot going on in there. W tell me again where you stand on that. Would you be open to that if that was part of uh, some legislation? Open to a, a, a different retirement age? To raising the retirement age uh, for Social Security eligibility. Yeah, I mean, I would look at it. Uh, we're all living longer. Uh, but it's got to be it's got to be part of a more comprehensive plan of health care and if it is uh, that might may not may end up being a, a, a small price to pay uh, because I think all of us uh, who are healthy at least are trying to work longer we, we enjoy we're not uh, happy about being forced into um, an early retirement uh, and facing you know 30 years of not being certainly you're not as you dive into a campaign Absolutely. Um, so we have to go to a break but I uh, I want to ask you one last quick question here uh, I mentioned you were uh, a professional athlete at one time President Trump said owners of the NFL of NFL team should fire players that kneel during the national anthem do you agree with them no I think that's too draconian they, they are exercising their rights as Americans to protest um, you know, if, if they were, if, if owners were inclined uh, not to hire some people uh, or play some people who were demonstrating, that's their decision. But I don't think uh, it's a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, uh, and certainly, President Trump and others are entitled to their opinion that this is not a good thing. I, I myself don't favor that. I, I think there's other ways of showing uh, how you disagree with some policies other than disrespecting our flag. All right, our guest this week on Newsmakers is Republican candidate for U.S. Senate, Robert Flanders. Stay with us. You're watching Newsmakers. Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. To my left, WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Our guest this week is Robert Flanders. He's, Republican. He's a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate. Uh, Bob, uh, most a lot of people know uh, you from the work that you did in Central Falls uh, when they filed for bankruptcy there and the receivership work. Uh, there were some protesters outside your announcement. We taped this on a Friday yesterday, a Thursday, at your announcement, uh, and and they they said that they rejected your statement that there was an agreed upon deal in in Central Falls, and they essentially said that that you had uh, a gun to their head hmm. in accepting the uh, the pension cuts that happened there. And I want to hear from one of the protesters uh, there. His name is Donald Carden. He's a president of, of the retired firefighters. Here he is. This is a kick, a kick in the uh, kick in the shin, and doing it in Central Falls after he came into the city and did what he did to us, cutting our pensions by 55%. The original cut was 50%. 
Um, but then we decided to ask him for seven days so that we could seek legal counsel and whatnot, and he just took another 5% off of us because he could. He didn't treat us with the respect that we deserved after fighting fires and, you know, fighting crime for over 20 years. So that's Donald Carden. He's the president of retired firefighters in Central Falls. And look, that was a that's a, a big theme from them. There, they they say, you know, you painted as it was uh, a decision everyone agreed upon, but they uh, certain people there feel it was shoved down their throat. How do you respond? Well, the, the situation uh, uh, Tim, was such that we were running out of money. We couldn't pay the th when I say we, the city of Central Falls could no longer pay the pensions that they had agreed to pay and they were about to default. And so the question was, how do we save as much as we can uh, to, to uh, pay these? And remember, the state had taken off the table the possibility of cutting bond payments and other uh, obligations to debt holders. So the only people to bear the brunt of the Central Falls restructuring were retirees and active employees. So our options were very limited. The whole idea was let's pay them what we can, but we had to try and come up with a, a plan that could obtain consent in light of the fact that the city was going broke. And so we presented it to the retirees. We said, here's, here's uh, transparency as to all the numbers. If you have a better idea, tell us. In the end, they all agreed to it. It was a consensual plan of debt adjustment. We were in and out of the bankruptcy in 13 or 14 months. And the city uh, now has a balanced budget that we gave them a plan of recovery for five years that uh, they've followed, and the result is, for the first time, they have uh, uh, surpluses and are, are hailed as the comeback city and have uh, uh, investments and, and bonds uh, that are investment grade. So uh, it's been a tremendous success. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, retirees and, and others uh, <coughs> had to uh, take uh, uh, reductions in the pensions, but that wasn't my doing. It was the doing of the fact that the people who let them down uh, years and decades running that city had, had not funded it properly, and this was all that we could come up with. You, you say it wasn't your doing, but the following year you dressed up as the Grim Reaper at the Providence Journal Follies. Do you regret that? No, that was making fun of myself. Uh, not I wasn't certainly mocking retirees or anybody else. I mean, this was, as, as you well know, uh, a night where uh, people try and um, uh, make fun of themselves, and, and I was pointing, trying to do that. Uh, if it was misinterpreted, I regret. You that can see why it didn't sit well with some people in Central Falls. Well, I can see that you know they were upset to, to begin with, but I was hoping they would they would take it more in the spirit of that evening, which was, as I said, trying to make fun of myself, not uh, poking fun at them. And if, if they took it otherwise, I, I certainly regret that. You cast your work there as public service, helping a struggling city. The Democrats say you and Gail Corrigan made about one million dollars in fees. Do they have that number right? Uh, I don't know what. Gail Corrigan made, uh, I, my firm, first of all, it wasn't me personally, the firm was engaged. Our fees were, I think, less than $500,000 for the, the year and a half or so that we, we were there, uh, which was much below what my normal billing rates were. So uh, this was a public service engagement where we cut our fees. Um, but you know, this was, we, we were fighting every constituency imaginable. The case, you recall, uh, went up to the Rhode Island Supreme Court because people were challenging the ability of the state. This, I was the state-appointed receiver. The state was paying me, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, it was. Uh, and we were putting a marker down for the rest of Rhode Island. We were trying to uh, save other cities from having to go through this turmoil. And you know, one of the things that came out of this was. Uh, Central Falls became a bloody shirt that other uh, politicians could wave in the front of unions and others to try and get concessions to avoid bankruptcy. So this had a, a positive overall effect for the state, not just for Central Falls. I want to ask you, you've served on a lot of boards and uh, been involved with a lot of groups over your years uh, in, in the community. I want to ask about Care New England, Rhode Island's number two hospital group. You've served on the board there, women and infants as well as Care New England for about 20 years. Um, the company's now in the process of closing down Memorial Hospital, costing hundreds of jobs. Blackstone Valley leaders aren't happy about that. A number of observers say the board and management made a major mistake acquiring Memorial four years ago, that it's destabilized women and infants in all of Care New England. Uh, do you regret, and of course it wasn't your decision solo, but do you regret now that the board went along with that idea? 
uh, in retrospect, of course, because it's turned out to be an albatross around the entire system and uh, an existential threat to the viability of, of the entire healthcare system. And the whole point of Memorial was to try and uh, acquire more primary care physicians and expertise. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the patient volume just uh, went through the floor there. Uh, they were unable to sustain operations. Uh, Care New England poured millions into trying to prop up Memorial, but with the competition around it, other hospitals in that network uh, and area um, were attracting physicians and others, uh, and so it didn't work out, and it's just a... Uh, the Nurses uh, Union argues that Care New England didn't do enough after taking well, a Memorial Hospital to, to preserve the jobs and the, and the facility there. It sounds like you reject that. Yes, of course, we did every, the, I think Care New England did everything practically possible to prop it up and help it and poured millions into it, and it became a rat hole uh, in the terms of uh, endless investments that weren't paying off, and there was no prospect for future improvement. So. Uh, the unfortunate decision had to be made to uh, close it down and, and protect the rest of these hospitals, including Women's and Infants and Kent uh, and, and other institutions that are part of the system. Bob, um, we're at a point where I like to I like to call it rapid fire. I want to cover a lot of ground. This isn't rapid fire. <laughs> Believe it or not, we actually can pick up the pace. So we, we don't want to... You're, you're an athlete. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, right. We, uh, we don't want to spend a lot of time on these questions. I just want to kind of get where you stand on them. So I'm looking for primarily one word answers, yes or no. Uh, yes or no, are you going to release your tax, re uh, tax returns? I assume that I will, but I... I you don't, you don't know? I don't know yet whether that... Uh, I'm What's giving you pause? And I know I'm breaking my own rule here, but why wouldn't you release your tax returns? Well, first of all, is it required? It will, uh, is, uh, the, is Senator Whitehouse going to release his tax returns? He has begun he, finally this year releasing finally, his tax yeah. returns. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I certainly would look on that favorably. I think that's, that makes sense. Um, should there be term limits for a U.S. Senate? Definitely. How I long? Would, uh, two terms uh, should be the limit. If you can't get it done in two terms, time to move on. We've got too many entrenched politicians uh, who are making a career So out in of 12 this. years, you'll pledge to, uh, even Absolutely. if there are no term limits, you'll get out. All right. Would you support eliminating the filibuster with Supreme Court nominees so they can be confirmed with a simple majority? Yes. Uh, are you pro-choice or pro-life? Pro-life. Do you support legalization of marijuana? Um, I support it, but only uh, going slow and seeing how other states are faring. I, th I would be very cautious about doing it. Handle it at the state level, not the federal level? Yes. Okay. And uh, you gave, I saw you gave the president, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you gave the president a letter grade of a C, and you uh, were real tough on Sheldon Whitehouse. You gave him an F. Uh, what letter grade would you give to Senator Jack Reed? I, I would give him a B. I think he's done a lot more to bring home the bacon for Rhode Island, uh, particular expertise on the defense side. Uh, so uh, I think he's done a good job. I wish he were more bipartisan than he has been. But uh, on balance, I, I would say, um, you know, he's, he's been good for Rhode Island. All right. Um, you mentioned earlier when you're talking about immigration, you, your years in the law, you were a justice on the high court. Um, I'm wondering, with all these uh, special counsel investigations and everything, do you think the president was right to fire James Comey earlier this year? Well, I, I mean, I think that um, he uh, overreacted somewhat to what was happening. I, I think that you know he's he's entitled to do that. That's his prerogative. He gets to pick who who was there. But um, I'm not sure that that served him well uh, because uh, obviously we, there's another investigator taking his place, and we need to see how that works out. That was my follow-up question, which is there is some talk now about the potential of the president firing uh, Bob Mueller, the special counsel, uh, and, and there's some uh, some people are arguing he should be doing that. Where do you come down? Do you think? No, I don't, I don't favor that. Let's, let, uh, let's, let's let this take its course. Let's see what uh, Mueller comes up with. Um, and you know, he's not, uh, the president isn't going to dodge this bullet by firing people. Uh, sooner or later, the facts have to come out. Let's see where they are. Let's face the music one way or the other. Um, you accused, we have just less than two minutes left, you accused uh, Sheldon Whitehouse of climate change bullying. Uh, do you support the president's call to remove the United States from the plan, uh, Paris Climate Accord? Yeah, I, I would have not done that. I would have favored him staying in the accord and trying to perhaps work to get better terms there. It was voluntary after all. Uh, President Obama got us into that without congressional uh, involvement or approval. Uh, that's not a treaty. Uh, I would favor involving Congress more in those uh, provisions, but I think 
we need to work with our allies in the rest of the world and and the, the United States unilaterally pulling out of that was not a good idea, I don't think. Is there anything in 30 seconds you can point to that you liked that Sheldon Whitehouse did in his 12 years? Well, I think, you know, he's obviously called attention to climate change. Um, I think it's important to uh, give him credit for that because obviously that is a concern. But uh, he's become a Johnny One Note almost on that whole uh, situation when there are so many other issues that we need help on. And I don't like the fact that it's coupled with uh, denigrating those who are questioning the extent to which climate change is human caused. Will you uh, debate Sheldon Whitehouse here in WPRI? Of course, if th that can be arranged, of course I would. Uh, we can arrange that. And, uh, <laughs> You're with the right people. <laughs> what about, uh, real quick, what about uh, Bobby Nardolillo? Will you debate him here, here on Channel 12? Sure. Okay, we have a commitment. Yes, Don't on both of those. Don't sound too excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Republican candidate for U.S. Senate, Robert Flanders. Thanks so much for Thank joining you. us on Have the program. Been. If you missed any of it, it's online, WPRI.com. For Ted Nisi, I'm Tim White. We will see you next week on Newsweek.